Berserker is probably my favorite Galarian evolution. I mean, look at him! I I'm not weird, am I? Galarian Meowth is big and fluffy and fierce and is no longer reminiscent of the Siamese or Calico Lucky Cat. It now has a fluffy face that extends into neck fluff that looks like a big ol' beard. And then it evolves, not into some variant of Persian though, oh no 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 no! It evolves into Berserker. Oh, it's a little Viking kitty! Or, well, Galarian Meowth is almost a Viking kitty, but not quite. But then Berserker is all Viking! Kitty, baby. <laughs> it is so cute in like the same kind of cute that you find like a little old man with a big beard, you know? That kind of cute. I'm not weird, am I? Well, both kitties in the evolution chain get their fluffiness partially from a certain cat breed, the Norwegian forest cat, or Norsk Skogskata. It's a natural breed, which seems like an oxymoron of a term, right? But a natural breed, or a land race, is a domesticated breed that is isolated from basically all other breeds of its species, and has become adapted to the local environment, both culturally and ecologically. And that adapting comes mostly through natural selection, and without much purposeful involvement from the humans around it. Living in Northern Europe since a little after 1000 AD, Norwegian forest cats have used the time since then to adapt rapidly yet naturally to the cold, harsh conditions by evolving to become big, sturdy, and fluffy. With especially fluffy cheeks, necks, and chests, and they have long claws that allow them to climb trees exceptionally well, even compared to other house cat breeds. This translates to Pokemon well. Galarian Meowth and Perserker both have especially especially long claws and fluffy, fluffy fur on their faces and beards. And according to the decks, parts of Galarian Meowth have turned to iron, and Perserker's iron helmet is actually hardened hair, and these are both very much like the sturdy physique of the Norwegian forest cat. And this iron is why they are now Steel-type. It's Pokémon's catch-all term for just metal. And it's particularly noteworthy because the Vikings were known to use iron in their weapons and helmets. But like, big whoop? Every European warrior in the Middle Ages had metal armor and weapons. What's so special about the Vikings' metal? Well, of course, by the time of knights and chivalry, metal armor and weapons had improved greatly, and any knight versus Viking battle would end in a very, very dead Viking. Maybe four dead Vikings for every one night. Uh, but the thing is, the Vikings had a pretty big head start on metalworking technology. Long story short, steel is iron improved by adding carbon, and Viking blacksmiths were making swords out of rudimentary steel long before the bulk of Europe. Uh, funnily enough, they did this accidentally. They were trying to infuse their swords with the spirits of animals by using their bones in the blacksmithing process. Accidental science happened, and the carbon in the bones made the metal stronger. Love when that happens. So yes, for the time, their technology combined with their tactics made the Vikings pretty unstoppable. And this carbonization is referenced by the coin on Galarian Meowth's head. It's black instead of gold, like with the Cantonian and Alolan forms, and this is because, quote, darker coins are harder, and harder coins garner more respect among Meowth. And now, while higher carbon doesn't necessarily make things look black, or anything, carbon itself is often black. So the implication is that Meowth's coin here, being so dark, means it has more carbon in it and is thus stronger. And this connection between strength or might and respect is a very Viking thing. The Vikings, or Wikinger, were very strong and loved to fight, and viewed dying in battle as the ultimate glory. They were those of the Norse who went out on boats and raided, traded, and conquered. It's important to remember that Viking was a warrior class, not the name of a region or culture. These Vikings, with their advanced metals for the time, went all over Europe during what came to be known as the Viking Age, from 793 until 1066 when the Normans conquered England. In fact, Vikings play a huge role in British history, which is why Berserker, along with Rune Regis, are in Galar specifically. They traveled the seas all over, as far down as Northern Africa and the Middle East, and as far over as North America, pillaging and colonizing, and yeah, they 
They discovered America long before Columbus. I still don't get why Americans love Columbus so much. The dude was a stupid race. Oh, I answered my own question. Well, on a positive note, Americans also love the 100% made in the USA mattresses from Helix Sleep, today's sponsor. If you wake up tired with aches and pains, then maybe it's time you try out a new mattress. And Helix makes premium mattresses customized to you and a partner because everybody sleeps differently and deserves a good night's sleep. Comfy. Their sleep quiz is quick and easy and gives you their recommendations, and when you order, they deliver it right to your doorstep with free shipping. And in a surprisingly small box, it's vacuum sealed. It's really fun taking it out of the box, actually. Wanting a medium feel, side sleeper support, and a cooling cover, I got the Midnight Lux over four years ago and still love it. And with its 10-year warranty, there's plenty more love to give. Look at my cat Sasha. She loves it too. She even loves the box. <coughs> the box is worth the purchase alone. So if you're interested, visit the link down below, helixsleep.com slash Loxton, and then not only will you get up to $200 off, but also two free pillows. And do not fear. Fear is not allowed! They offer financing options and also a 100-night sleep trial to make sure you love it, and if not, they'll pick it up for you and give you a refund, so there's no need to be nervous about ordering a mattress online, especially from helixsleep.com slash Loxton. And here's my cat Sasha again. <laughs> There's gonna be treat crumbs all over the bed now. Bonus fact, the Vikings were notably not racist, for the time anyway, though they were pretty rapey. Uh, you take some, you lose some, clearly nobody's perfect. Uh, anyways, in the places that the Vikings pillaged, some of them would settle wherever they landed, uh, but the ones who went back would often bring wives, animals, and goods back to Scandinavia, which is the collective term for present-day Norway, Denmark, and Sweden. Sometimes people will add some other countries in there, but those are the three pretty much everyone agrees on. Uh, and one of the things they brought back from Britain, though, yeah. were the cats! Plenty of which ended up living on the Viking boats, eating vermin and supposedly bringing the Vikings good luck in battle. Those cats then adapted to the colder climates and evolved to be stockier and have longer fur and become the modern Norwegian forest cat. Just like how Galarian Meowth's dex entry states, living with a savage seafaring people has toughened its body. It's really perfect. It was a British thing that adapted and became a Vikingy Scandinavian thing. And now it's back! Be all because raids? Their claws, especially berserkers, are strong and sharp and are inspired by both Old Norse tales of a breed of mountain-dwelling fairy cat with an ability to climb sheer rock faces that other cats could not manage, which is most likely a reference to the ancestors of the Norwegian forest cat, and also by the Saix, a utility knife and sidearm that basically all Norsemen carried around with them at all times, including into battle. They were heavy and would be wielded in battle much like a machete or falchion. Now, a notable subclass of Viking that was seen as especially tough was the Berserker, or Berserkir, and what they were and how they fought specifically has had a lot of, uh, hand-wavy fantasy thrown into the mix. Just like Viking helmets with horns. It, it's not real, it's fantasy. What? Horns happen to be the latest fashion. You can't walk around with horns on their helmet? It looks ridiculous. But Berserkers did fight in a trance-like fury, which was known as the Berserkergang, if I'm pronouncing that right. And while in this trance, they would be unable to tell friend from foe, and when not in a trance, they were seen as calm, and possibly even weak. And this dichotomy between all-out rage against everyone and everything around you and calm is shown in this Pokémon line, with the calm almost sleepy eyes and neutral stance to the intense action-y pose they both have in Pokemon Home and during attacks. I love how Berserker's eyes go into the back of its head. It's very trancey. This going berserk was probably induced by drugs and had the effect of essentially shooting them so full of adrenaline that they just got confused and they were able to lift and break things that humans normally couldn't and when they did finally calm down, they are just tired from all of the stuff they just did. So the, the contrast between the Berserker's two states was often exaggerated in sagas and artworks to show how mighty and scary going Berserk was to those around them. It's like someone was constantly going back and forth between being on Floridian bath salts and edibles. What? 
During big battles, Berserker would wear the pelt of a bear or sometimes a wolf to let fellow Vikings know that they wouldn't be able to understand who not to hurt, and thus the other should give the Berserker a wide birth, almost like they're going into an animal-like state. And of course that means they too had big fluffy coats just like Berserker, who lives for the thrill of battle, and its name obviously sounds like Berserker. Perser it's like Berserker, and you throw in the purr sound because it's a cat. It's a very basic name, but it's great. For some more fun history, later Christians would interpret the Berserkers as heathen devils, which is probably partially why Galarian Meowth has two little, little horns up here between its ears. There is, of course, the whole inaccurate Viking helmet thing, too, but those always tend to be on the side of the head, not the top, the way devil horns are always depicted. Plus, I'm sure the Pokemon designers knew that Vikings didn't actually have horned helmets, but horned helmets are such a ubiquitous part of popular media's portrayal of Vikings that it has essentially become an essential part of the modern Viking mythos. And any modern Viking-inspired creature would look incomplete without some visual reference to one, as unfortunate as that is. Those gosh dang 1800s painters and opera singers ruined Vikings! Vikings. And speaking of Viking depictions, Vikings are often depicted with beards or facial hair, especially when contrasted with the clean-shaven or at least closely trimmed facial hair of the Christian priests and kings of the time, which is referenced by Archidimon having beards instead of just fluffy chests and fluffy bodies. Which, it, it can look kinda silly from the side or from the back, but I get where they were going with it. And lastly, to sort of tie this all together super nicely, there is the Norse goddess Freya, who was the goddess of both war and gold and other things. But the really cool thing is that she rides on a chariot pulled by two cats, whose depictions match a Norwegian forest cat. And their names are Baigol and Trejo, which each mean honey and amber, respectfully. And this is probably why both Mon's main colors and shiny colors are what they are. And this association with gold is probably part of why they chose Meowth as the first form, since regular Meowth is already associated with gold and wealth. And being a Norse goddess of gold and war, it makes absolutely perfect sense to have your Norse gold-loving cat also become a Norse warrior. A Viking! Yeah.